Okay, we're going to start cleaning a large Brew 14 head. The tools that I've got out here that I'm using are an X-Acto knife, a little piece of a wet scrubber, the old time pink wet scrubbers. These are no longer available anymore, so if you don't have one of these, you're going to have to substitute with something else. Um, you can actually take the seam line off with the knife and then just go to the nylon glove. Okay, then I also have a white stain cleaning brush here also. Okay, so I'm going to start by taking the seam line off. So I'm going to scrape the seam line off all the way around the head. Be careful not to gouge the head with your X-Acto knife. Now this head has been soaking in water, oh, for about an hour or so. I've had it over soaking in the sink. I do have a little pan of water right here that I can dip the head in when I'm ready to rinse off. Okay, all of this extra stuff that's on the knife, I'm going to put in the jug of water. Okay, I'm going to turn it over. Do the seam line on this side. I carefully take it off around the ears. Okay, I'm just rinsing my knife off in the water. I want to keep this head wet, but I don't need to be actually cleaning this in a bucket of water. I can do it over top of the towel. You don't need to actually do it in the water where you've got the water dripping all down your elbows and everything else. As long as the head is wet and you rinse it off occasionally is all that's necessary. Okay, so I have the seam line off all the way around. Now I'm going to take the little tub of water I've got here, rinse off all those scrapings that I've just taken off from the seam line. Okay. Now I'm ready to start scrubbing with the little pink wet scrubber. You can also use, Sealy's has something called comfy sponges. I'm not sure, I believe Kemper used to have those also. Okay, so I'm going to use the white side, which is the real smooth side, not the pink side with the sandpaper on it. That's a little bit too rough. Okay, so I'm going to start by removing the seam. going to carefully go around it on the ear. Okay. Go around the top of the head and then down the seam on this side of the head. And then down the side of the neck. Now this head has been, I cut the eyes out and sized the eyes in the greenware stage. I checked for any imperfections on the face that I fixed in the greenware stage. 
and then it was fired to a cone 019 in order to do the soft firing and then cleaning in the water. Okay, I've gone over the seam line all the way, so now I'm going to take the little wet scrubber and I'm going to go lightly over all the larger areas of the face. I don't want to get this down in like around the nose and the eyes and the mouth too closely or it's going to take off some detail I don't want to lose. So I'm going to stick to the larger surfaces here like the forehead and the cheeks, the neck, Okay, now I'm going to switch to this white stain cleaning brush. And I'm going to go over the eyebrow area, the eye area, I go over both eyes. I want to go over the eyelids, the tear ducts, the upper eyelids, back over the eyebrows again. Okay, I want to go over the nose. Make sure it's clean around the nose. Then I'm going to go down to the lips. Use the brush on the lips. I'm going to go into the little creases right here and around the chin. Okay, now I have all this paste on here that's been loosened up from using the brush. I'm going to take the vinyl glove that I have on. It's not a latex glove, it's a vinyl glove. And I'm going to start moving this paste around. This paste is going to help smooth the head. It kind of like cleans itself. It's actually the paste that's going around and doing all of the cleaning. You know, it's a little bit of an abrasiveness there. And so it's cleaning the entire face then. So I'm going to go over all the areas with my hand, with the glove on, trying to get this head as smooth as possible. Okay, one thing I've noticed, the camera kind of speeds up the motion some. I'm really not moving as fast as what it's showing here. So I'm slowing down a little bit here so you can see. But it does seem to speed everything up a little bit. Okay, I'm going to make sure I've gone over everything now. top rim. When this was poured, when the greenware was poured, my husband has already, you know, trimmed out the top of the head and he's also taken some water on his fingers and smoothed out that inside rim there to try and keep, you know, any little tiny cracks from developing. Okay, we're going to make sure we're getting the back of the head clean also. This head is poured in white porcelain. So it's going to need a wash. So we want the head as smooth as possible in order to not show up any imperfections that might have been in the porcelain. So around the ears. OK, 
Okay, now you've noticed so far I haven't dipped this back in the water yet. I've been cleaning the whole thing with just a little bit of water on my fingers. I can keep the paste wet enough that I can continue to clean the entire head. Okay, now at this stage, I need to take it over to the sink and under running water, I'm going to take a very soft, large dusting brush and I'm going to totally rinse this off so all the dust is off of here. So I will be back in just a minute or so. Can't get my camera over to the sink. So I'm going to take this over and rinse it real good. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I'm going to... Now I've rinsed this head totally under the faucet with the clean water. I want to make sure that I have every bit of the paste off of there. I don't want any of that to fire on. It'll leave a rough substance that you won't be able to clean off. I also made sure while I had it under the faucet that I used this lady finger tool and slid that in the earring holes to make sure they weren't plugged up. Same way with this one. Okay, now when it's real shiny and wet like this from the surface water, you know, from rinsing it, you can't tell whether it's totally clean or not and if there's any scratches or anything there. So I actually need to set this off to the side, let it dry, oh, five, ten minutes or so, and then come back and check it and see if I see any imperfections, scratches, pinholes, anything like that. And if there is, then I'll, you know, re-clean it again the same way I just did with water and the glove on my hand. Then when I know it's, you know, totally finished, looks great, I'm going to put this in a kiln and I'm going to fire it to an 06. Not a cone 6, but an 06. I'm going to partially fire it to an 06. Then after it cools, I'm going to take it out and then I'm going to use a super doll sponge uh, it's a little sponge that looks like this. I'm going to spritz the head with water from a water bottle after I take it back out after firing to a cone 06. I'm going to wet it with a spray bottle. Then I'm going to dip this sponge in the water and I'm just going to wipe all over the head like this as one last precaution before I fire to a true cone six. Okay, so that'll be my last step. After it's been fired to an 06, then I'm going to go back in, go over it with this sponge to make sure everything's totally clean, and then I'll fire it to a cone six, and then it'll be ready to start painting. Okay. Oh, also make sure you have your name and the year incised on the back of the head. And that should be about it. It's ready to go in the kiln. And I will not use any prop on this at all. I'll just put it in the kiln on a layer of sand, probably about a half inch thick. So then as it's firing, the little grains of sand work like little ball bearings to where as it shrinks they'll just kind of roll on the sand and it won't stick to the shelf. But I don't actually use kiln wash on my shelves. I don't need it. And I don't need any prop at all for this head. It should fire just fine without being propped. Okay, that's about it. Let's get this head fired to a true cone 6 so it's ready to paint on. Thanks. <laughs>